authority that was given to me, I hand it to you. Use it. Use it. Use it.
difficulty in standing here, but I realise it's all about me. Thank goodness. So I'm going to say this, and then I said, Lord, do you really want me to say this? And he said, well, it's not safe. So I'm <laughs> going to say this. <laughs> and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that one day when we pass the white buckets around, we will be throwing in our glasses and our hearing aids and our walking sticks and everything else. I decree and declare it in the name of Jesus and I, I, with the authority that I have been given, I bring substance to those words and I ask all of you to stand in agreement with me and declare it right now in the presence of God one day when those white buckets are being passed around, glasses, hearing aids, walking sticks, and every medical tablets, everything will be thrown in there, and we will have an altar here, and everyone will see the power of the living God. Amen. Yeah. I'm to give you a white bucket. One of the white buckets. There's the white bucket. One of them. to leave everyone's body right now in Jesus' name. I command bone pain to go right now in the name of Jesus. For every spirit of arthritis to leave his bones in the name of Jesus. Father, every spirit of infirmity, every, yes, every spirit of death and depression to go in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, come in power. It's not about me, it's about you. We will see miracles in this place. I decree and declare it. This is a house of healing. Every, every spirit of the enemy is to be coughed out, spewed out of everyone in the name of Jesus. Every cold, everything that causes sickness and disease to get out in the name of Jesus. You leave! I have that power and authority and I use it right now. Lord of 
I don't know, the, in the spirit, I saw that there were chains on people, and I know I always do the weird stuff, but the Lord is saying, as an act of faith, if you feel like you're oppressed and like you're being bound, you're going to turn around seven times, as an act, yeah, turn around like this. And what I saw was it was un uncoiling, chains were breaking off. Yes. So some people have been bound, Hallelujah. the depression has bound people, the infirmity has bound people, and yeah. people have been chained with it. So let's go. Yeah, and if you what? need that this morning, yes. and you are just taking that step of faith, you need someone to agree with you, just come and stand here, the prayer team, just come here right now and lay hands on those people. If you want to be set free, you know you've been bound by something that's just been affect affecting you. Just come and come and stand here. The prayer team gonna lay hands on you, release you from that now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Freedom in the house of God this morning. Freedom in the house of God this morning. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Freedom now in the name of Jesus. Freedom now in Jesus' name. Cortana Keshika, come and come off her now in the name of Jesus. You have no place to torment her anymore. From this moment forward, I speak freedom. Freedom and deliverance for you and your whole family in the name of Jesus. Freedom now. Now.
traveling to Cheltenham and listening to uh, Louis Giglio on my radio and he spoke of this verse and you know when a single verse becomes a regular <coughs> word to you it's like wow I've never seen that before do you know that when God said this to Jesus he had never ever performed one miracle he'd never done anything and I just realized that you do not have to do anything for God to love you. He loves you just as you are, exactly as you are. And um, just something came to me when Felicity was saying, be bold, walk in authority. And uh, you know that God didn't create all of us to be bold. 
you know that he created some of us to be gentle souls. <laughs> so I don't want any one of you that are the gentle souls, that are not those bold people, that don't like to stand up in the front. God loves you. And he created you to be exactly who you are. Amen. 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 Right, now don't go to sleep on the notices, right? <laughs> so... On this Tuesday, we're having the first, what I hope will be many, of a church prayer time. We're starting at 7.30, yeah. And we are really expecting this to be an encounter with the Holy Spirit. We've got different people. We've got, we've got lovely Christine Armstrong. We've got Chris Pateman. We've got wonderful Felicity leaving different sessions of it. We're going to have instrumental music. But just come and pour your heart out to Jesus. Christine You're lovely, isn't it? <laughs> and we're really expecting this is a whole this is a whole church thing. That the prayer is the engine of this church. Yeah. yeah? And we are really expecting to be encountered by God. So please don't miss it. Well, if you can't come for the whole time, just come. We so value you being here. On Saturday, the first, ladies, you get a chance to chill out at our house. Dave will definitely be going to hide it, so you're all right. Um, and we said that we would start with a meal first. So it's at seven o'clock, and Lee is organising it. So could you put your name so we've got some idea of who's coming and sign up to an item of food so that we haven't got ten lots of the same thing? Do you want to say anything, Lee? Yeah, just... I don't, I don't need that. Um, just if you can come to me at the end of the service today and just let me know. I've got a list of things that... Where you can, that everyone can bring. You can just kind of choose one or two things. We're not doing fancy. We're just doing light meats and cheese. It's just a light buffet, yeah. yeah. Um, so that we don't all bring the same thing or all bring donuts or you know. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Finish the notice. Yeah. So on um, Saturday the twenty second, please keep that free because that is the guff gathering and we've got Rob Kate speaking. And then on the fourth of November bonfire night we are going to have a church celebration bonfire food outside but this is an event to invite people that don't know jesus yeah. so really be praying now that you could be strategic who you bring that you could bring a friend you know to introduce them to jesus that night and we're all going to have a great load of fun sorry one of the gentle souls your husband <laughs> 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 wanted to say that <clears throat> if you're a gentle soul, we all could clean yourself. Yes. Don't let anyone walk on you. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, we're now going to take up the offering. This is part of our love and our service. It's an act of will, but it's also an act of your heart. And it's about you taking ownership in this place your part so just pray what god puts in your heart to give yeah and if you'd like an envelope just wave at someone with a bucket and they will give you one yeah yeah and people will come around and just receive that from you thank you <coughs> Yeah. So we just pray over what people have offered, and we just pray over that seed that's going to go out, and that blessing for the givers. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that you give us seed, and from it we expect a great harvest. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're very fortunate to have Sheena speaking this morning, but before she does so, Steve is going on two mission trips, Switzerland and Denmark. So we're just going to have this opportunity for him to come out here and for anybody, if you've got a word, come and pray over him to send him out. So come on everybody, stampede over here. Don't be shy. Come on, you gentle souls. Yeah, come on gentle souls, it's your chance. You are called. You are called. It's not your own desire, but you're called to, to do this. Um, God will honor you in it, and your word will go out and will not return to you. 
we are not returning to them. And we thank you that it's just not you going out, but you go out as our representation, that the love and the care and the compassion that we feel for these people, that Steve is extending it on our behalf, Jesus. And we are expecting great things, Jesus. And right now, for each person that's going to come under Steve's ministry, we just say, stir up in the Holy Spirit, stir up an expectation to receive yeah, in the spiritual realm. Thank you. Father, we thank you for Steve. We thank you for the gift that he is to this church. But Lord, we willingly send him in the name, in the power of your Holy Spirit, as a gift to everybody that he will speak to, everybody he's expecting to speak to, and everybody that you have for him to speak to that he doesn't yet know that he is going to speak to. And Lord, we bless him. We ask for a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we thank you, Lord, for when he comes back. Amen. Yeah. I could hear the Lord saying, as parts of Europe want to be bombing in the physical, he says he's going to be releasing through you. You release spiritual bombs. <laughs> spiritual bombs you release into the camp of the enemy. As you step forward, and I saw that you were climbing like a mount, uh, mountain, and the mountain steps had been cut in the mountain, and you were stepping up into the, you know, up and up in the mountains, and you were just stepping, no energy drain or anything. You were just climbing, and as each step kept on coming, you had the energy to, you know, climb higher and higher. And so, Lord, we pray that over Steve right now in the name of Jesus, yeah. Lord, uh, that as the enemy sees him coming, they will flee, Lord, even before he gets there, Lord, because, Lord, you have cut a huge, spacious place for him, Lord, that as he goes and goes to minister, Lord, that you will cut that spacious place for him, Lord, uh, Lord, what you have planned, Lord, all of it and even more, Lord, that he shall do in your name, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Steve, I just had this picture of a river, and I heard the words, as a river goes forth with the power of a river, you will carry with you not just life to bring life as river does, but also you will carry with you so many gifts as a river carries so many things that finds in its way to the churches that you will be going. So Lord, we just pray that that anointing will be even more so powerful. He will go forth with the power of a river, the river that is in your Holy Spirit. And he will conquer the gates that needs to be conquered. And he will bring light and insight to the minds that are ready to hear in Jesus' name. Uh, it's not your idea, it's not your idea to go, Steve. It isn't. He's placed it in your heart because he placed it in your heart. You didn't place it in your heart. He placed it in your heart. Therefore, <coughs> he will put the words in your mouth. He will put the right people in the way because there are certain people he wants to speak to and you're the person he wants to speak to those people. With. Now, it might be that you might speak to... There, there are certain people you'll speak to who are probably quite critical within their locations. And they're the ones that you really need to be focusing on. Because as you talk to the game changers, the game changers will be game changers. I know I make sense. Father, we just send him in the anointing that you have preordained and predestined him to walk in. Father God, that he's going there to fulfill your plans and your purposes. And Father God, we thank you that in Ephesians it says that we've often said that he goes before you to prepare a way for and good works for you to move into, Steve. So Father God, we pray fruitfulness. We pray a release of the Spirit. And Father God, we pray for those who are listening to Steve, that they will take seriously what is being said by the Spirit. Father God, they will not just be hearers of the Word, but they will be doers of the Word. Father God, that Steve goes, that he will be fruitful and they will bear fruit. So Father God, cause an open heaven. Cause a highway. 
for your word to be spoken into. And Father God, cause a reaction amongst those who are listening. Father God, build relationship. Build relationship within the body of Christ. Because as Steve goes, we go. As Steve goes, we go. So Father God, as we're praying for him, building relationship, our relationships with others will increase. Thank you, Lord, in your name. And Father God, we thank you for Maria, who has the ability to release him to do these things. And Father God, we pray that she will just remain in peace. And Father God, you'll give her the wherewithal to do all that she needs to do. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just saw Steve when Tony was praying for you that um, that you go in the office of a prophet and then wherever you go there is such an expectation and such a pressure for a prophet to perform and God says do not come under that do not come under that so we just break you free from any pressure from any expectation that every word that you speak will be the word of the Lord in Jesus name. Amen the Lord bless you on, uh, in October, as well, we have a prophetic mentoring day. If you would like to join me, I'm uh, um, going to Dr. Sharon Stone's church, that's Christian International, uh, which is over at my church in Windsor. Uh, so if you fancy coming to Windsor for the day, it's the second Saturday in October, where I'll be ministering with Dr. Sharon, and we're going to be doing a prophetic mentoring day there. So you're more than welcome to join us. You will need to register. So if you would like to come to that with me, it's a whole day thing, um, then come and see me so I can put your name down on the list. Um, that's going to be a wonderful time of training and equipping. Um, Dr. Sharon and I will be leading you in. And then in November as well, value your prayers because I'm going to Amsterdam to the European Council of Prophets, which is a time once a year where we come together, different prophets from across Europe, to hear from the Lord of what he's wanting to say. And given everything that is going on in the nations, particularly with the Ukraine situation, I believe it is going to be a strategic time. And so let's be praying for that time in November as different prophetic voices gather from all over Europe to pray into that. And I'll be joining Dr. Sharon and uh, Prophet Emma Stark from Scotland from Glasgow Prophetic Centre as well. So it's going to be a wonderful time. So thank you so much for your prayers. Maroon, and I really appreciate you and we love you. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. And thank you, Tony, because you covered what I was going to say. Because to to Marie, I don't know if you were here to hear it, but we just thank you for your generosity of spirit and your in releasing Steve. Because if she wasn't such a generous wife, he wouldn't be able to go on these things. And we just declare we just declare blessing and protection on the family while Steve is gone. Now can you give a hand to Sheen, please? So we just thank you for Sheena, and we just thank you for her word that she's got for us this morning, that you will bless her richly as she speaks to us. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I'm now feeling very nervous. I wasn't earlier on, but I'm now feeling very nervous. <laughs> no need. I was very blessed the other week when um, dear Doug shared how his grandson, um, Alex, can you come in here? Just come with me. When he shared how his grandson would come and sit on his knee, you know, over there, Doug's grandson sits on his knee. Do you sit on my knee? No. <laughs> do you give me cuddles? Yes. You do. Yes, and that's what Jesus wants of us. But Alex always comes into my room, and what do you ask me to do? What do you always come Play a game. In? Play a game. Okay, you may go now. <laughs> and this is the game that we play. You can see it's well used. Snakes and ladders. But it's not snakes and it's not ladders. It's twigs and worms. Worms. (laughs) Now, if you're very clever, 
you can throw the dice and start at the beginning. You throw a three and you go up the long ladder. You throw a six, have another go, and you go up another ladder. You throw a five and you get a home in three goes. Wow. Now, this is our life, isn't it? It's a picture of our lives. We go up and sometimes we come down. But we're always progressing upwards to the core the upward call of Jesus Christ to fulfill the plan and purpose that he has for each one of our lives. I'm glad it's not a ladder, because as you get older, ladders are not good. <laughs> They're twigs. Jesus is the plan. Come on. Our lives are based upon the word of God, and Jesus is the one that takes us upward. We choose to go upwards, it's not just about shaking a dice. But you know, we've given words to the little worms. We have given words to the one that we're always landing on, which always brings us down. And he's got a very smiley face. And then there's the little worm towards the home. It's only little. And you land on the square and you keep going round and round and round and round and it stops you getting to the final destination and the last square that you go up a little ladder on and brings you to square 99 you've got to throw the one can you throw the one at the end of the game <laughs> oh you throw every other number except the one but you see the enemy would stop us fulfilling the fullness of the call that he's got on our lives and you know, this morning we have seen the Holy Spirit move amongst us. And the word I have is so basic. I don't want to distract. Why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? Is it just to get your need met? Well, because you know, we started off this morning. If you're coming in with all the jewels so if you said it, if you're coming in with feelings of anxiety, etc., 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 we needed to get rid of them. We've had it again through prophetic words. Things that stop us moving on in our lives become an entanglement, and we need to break the chains. We need to move on. You see, you can hear the word of God in church for your own life, but it's also about a collective word that he wants to speak to us as a people. And, you know, I don't know if you, you take any notes or whether you look back at what Jesus has said in the meetings. And, and I'm a great person who just likes to sit and think and meditate on what people have actually said. And I think... I don't believe in that. No, I don't see it quite like that. And, oh, that was good. I, I can say amen to that. You know, things are said in meetings that sometimes we don't always agree with. Are we going to be confused? Or are we going to say, I'm going to find out what that's all about. I'm going to go into the word. I'm going to see and get it sorted. Or I'm going to go and ask someone about it. Because it's no good accepting every single thing that is said. We're told to test the word of the Lord. We all prophesy in part. There is a fullness in the word of God that we need to find. And like the snakes and ladders or the, root, the branches and the worms, we need to find the right square to stand on, to move upwards. Yes, yeah. to move on. It's, that's just the beginning. Not, I wrote down all sorts of things, but I don't think I'm going to come in with everything. But just a few things that Jesus has said this morning to us. Have you heard? Have you heard the word this morning? What are you going to do with it? I won't recall all the words because we haven't got time. But I'm going to read something. So if you have your Bibles or you want to look it up, I want you to look up in uh, Luke chapter 8. Luke 
Okay, I'm contesting with a, somebody who's got a louder voice than me. Okay, <laughs> Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to start at verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. This is something you know very, very well. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. I have this trouble every time I come to talk. Some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and soon as it sprang up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it. But others fell on the ground, good ground, that sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. And when it said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now we, we so often hear this parable about the word of God and salvation. But it's a word for us when the word of God comes, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of us as a church. Can you hear me? So Jesus goes on and he says to his disciples, I'll tell you what this word means. It says, now... The parable is the seed. Uh, this is this. The seed is the word of God. So God is planting words in us. He's planting seeds in us. We're not only planting seeds, but He is planting seeds in us. Okay. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. You know, salvation is not just a one-time occurrence. It's a lifetime word. We are constantly being saved from the enemy in walks of our lives. It's, we talk about it as a one-time salvation because we know that Jesus died for our sin. He was the one and only sacrifice that was accepted by God. And therefore, when we believe in him, we too can have that salvation that promises that we will be eternally with him. But you know, the word of God comes and it's always to bring us salvation, freedom. That's what it's about. It's to bring us freedom from the things that would ensnare us. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and then they have no root, believe for a while, and in the time of temptation, fall away. Come on. Do you really take a hold of what God is saying? Or are you going to say, well, I'm, I'm believing in the rock. That's my Jesus. I'm standing on firm foundation. I'm like that man who built his house on the rock. I'm not going to let the wind and the waves destroy me. But hey, when temptation comes, we can fall away. We have to do something more than just accept the word. It's good for today. My goodness me, that was a good meeting. The Holy Spirit really met me there. But what am I going to do? Am I going to live in the past? No. I've got to believe that that word goes deep into my heart and those things will not touch me again. Otherwise, I will be robbed of the word that God has put in my heart. Now, the ones that fell among thorns, these are seeds, <laughs> who, when they have heard go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, 
and bring no fruit to maturity. Are you bringing forth fruit and mature fruit? Is it just to last for a day or is it going to be long term? But the ones that fell on the gr good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear it, therefore fruit with patience. I oh, like that little word at the end, with patience. You know, sometimes we're not very patient. We want things to happen now. I want it now. I want it now. But you see, when the word of God comes and it's he speaks so clearly to us. Some of us have been in chains and we've turned around seven times and we've loosed it. What are you going to do? Are you going to go back down and next time you come across a problem that enchained you? Are you what are you going to do? No. You've got to break. You've got to realise it's been broken off. And I'm not going to be pulled down by it. I'm going to step forth and I'm going to go on in the power and the authority of the word of God. Yeah. It's going to produce fruit and fruit that will last. It's not going to be fruit that's going to disappear. That's right. Come on. God is speaking to us as a people that is going to be about bringing forth fruit that is going to last. I was very interested when I started to look at this parable because it's in three books, Matthew, Mark and Luke. And so... I looked at other parables, but I looked at the ones that were in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's a very interesting one. Let me just share briefly these parables that are in all three Gospels. You can look at them because I think they have real meaning for us as a people. Firstly, there's the lamp that you don't put under a bushel and hide it away. You put it on the lampstand. Secondly, there's the old cloth and the new cloth. You don't sew a piece of new cloth on an old garment. You don't put old new wine into old wineskins. They come together. Interesting. Don't hide your light. Don't put new wine in old wineskins. The third one was the sower. The next one was the mustard seed. The smallest of seeds, but it grows into a great tree. A great tree. The birds of the air come and nestle in it. Come on, when we are growing into the fullness of the power of God, there will come nesting in our tree those who have problems. Those who are parts of the everyday world and they, I'm resting here. This is a safe place and we then can embrace them. Because we're strong, we're rooted in the word of God. We have dealt with the issues of life. We are going to produce the good fruit. Come on, little seed, big tree. The next one is about the tenants who have a vineyard. He has a vineyard and he sends out people to his vineyard and says, I'd like to share in the fruit. And every time he sends forth a servant, what happens? They get beaten up, they get shaken up, they get killed and everything else. And then he says, I'll, I'll send my son. They won't kill him. But what happens? The son comes to the vineyard. And the people who've been looking after the vineyard, <laughs> oh, we'll get rid of him, we can manage on our own, thank you very much. So the owner of the vineyard doesn't get benefit from the vines that he's planted. And we know that this is a, song, a, a parable about Jesus coming and how he has made a beautiful world. And he sent servants to come and so he can share in the fruit. And people rejected the word of God all the way through the Old Testament. But there comes the point when the sun comes and they kill him. You know, we can bring this into today and say, I know Jesus is my Lord and Saviour. 
But am I going to reject the fullness of the word of God that he's placed inside of me? The answer is no. We want to bring forth that fruit. We don't want to reject what Jesus is saying to us. And the final parable that's in all three Gospels is the one of the fig tree. Where the owner of the fig tree comes back one day and it's not bearing any fruit. And what's he doing? Cut it down. Let's not be the people of God to reject the word of God and we're cut down. It's important, people, because we can see church life in so many different areas around our world, and the churches are not going anywhere. Why? Because they've lost vision, they've lost purpose, they haven't heard the word of God in season, they've let the entanglement of this world smother the word and really they're cut down they don't function anymore but you see jesus has been speaking to us as a people over the last few weeks which i want to just touch on i know it's a long meeting but i just feel it's important that we touch on some of the things that god has been saying after the summer you know stephen spoke about our authority and keys I thought I'd bring my bunch of keys because actually my bunch of keys rattles quite a bit. And I looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness me, what I've got here? The key to my house. I guess you've all got a key to your house on your key rings. I have a key to my car on my key ring. I have a key for the church, or you might have a key for work. There are other keys here that I don't know what they're about. <laughs> but they were of some use at some point in my life. Yeah. When Jesus has put the authority of the keys of the kingdom in our hand, I want us to look very carefully at the three most important areas. Our home life, our life in that home, our personal things that go on in our life. Where we're going, I have a car. You might be going to bus, but I have a car. Where I'm going, why am I going? What's Jesus wanting me to do there? Come on. We've got the keys of the kingdom. Can I go anywhere? Stephen is off to the countries of the world. Do you know when he was a little boy? We had a minister who came as a prophet in those days. And I don't know quite exactly how it happened, but he said to my husband, he said, um, we're going to have to watch this young boy because he is a prophet in the making. He had taken him away, Stephen, to uh, the Midlands to a conference where he was speaking and there were young people's meetings going on and he, he sat Stephen down, I think you were about 13, 14, in the middle of this room and um, said to the people, I brought this young man here he's a prophet, in training he might have a word, have you got a word Stephen? So he says sure and he stands up, he's a usual bullshit man, and starts prophesying well, this, this gentleman came up and said I could not believe what he brought to the light because nobody else could have said those things. He couldn't have said those things because he knew the problem. But as a visiting speaker and a visiting child who was pointing out things that were actually out of order and needed to be put back into order, he came with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so he told us very carefully to guard him. And there were people who would come to our house and say, we want to put him on the television. And David said, no, we're not putting him on the television. So we put a careful ring around where he could or could not go. But you see, the prophet in the making is having to learn a lot of things. And Stephen is learning a lot of things. You might have the word in season, 
but he has to be willing to to say okay somebody else can bring this and i can bring something else he can say yes i'll move in here and i'll bring the word of the lord is it in the time of god and you and i are just the same we bring the word of god in season to those that we meet every day and in our own lives today god has touched areas in people's lives where they need to move on are you going to let the enemy take it away or are you going to really know the chains are broken yeah. and you move on into the fullness of all that you say <coughs> you know last week when um tom was here and uh, we had words from and beans uh, what's the lady's name here heather jones heather jones yes heather you know which were important to come out about diving deeper looking for buried treasure and this that and the other do you know i hate swimming i hate it i'm watering my ears come on i hate it I don't mind it if you put the head above water and I'm no good at swimming anymore. But you know, to swim and look for treasure, and the pirates would look for treasure, they wouldn't do it without X marking the spot. Hear me. If we are to dig deeper in the things of God, we've got to know what we're digging for. Right. Yeah. Can you hear what I'm saying? It's no good saying, well, there's treasure to behold. But if we don't take the treasure that Jesus has already given us and we move towards it and we take it for ourselves and we move on, we'll never get to the next <laughs> treasure. Right, You've got to take the treasure yeah. that he shows you today and move on. Yes. Then the next treasure will be even bigger and even better. And you think, how did I miss it before? Did I really dig any deeper? No. I just had moved from one place to the other. I'm going deeper in God from day to day to day to day. I'm not digging, digging, digging fruitlessly. I'm moving in the vision of God and the calling of God that's for me. Yes? And then we have the word about from Isaiah. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Hey. We all know this. We have, I thought, oh dear, it's all come up on the screen this morning just as we're starting a new thing, a new day, a new rejoicing, a new worship, a new... <sighs> We've got a new Prime Minister, new King. Oh my goodness, everything is new. Yeah. Is the church new? They say Rome wasn't built in a day, but I tell you, the church was. One day changed everything. The day the Holy Spirit came upon the people who had heard and seen Jesus moving. And the world was changed. When the Holy Spirit begins to move on you and I in a supernatural way, the day changes. We move from one degree of glory to another. We're not going to hide that lamp under a bushel. We're going to make it be seen. The glory of God is going to be seen. Yeah. But it's no good if I just stay in this nice little world. I've got to move on. I've got to go from square one to square one. It's very interesting if we read in Isaiah. Just a little how am I doing? This verse in Isaiah that Heather read last week, I don't know where I am in my notes. <laughs> um, it's in chapter 43 and verse 19 of Isaiah. I just want to read it in its context. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? 
I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me. This word also appeared in the chapter before. He said it again. You see, if you turn the page, we're going to chapter 42 and verse 8. It says, I am the Lord, that's my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. I read such an interesting article about Isaiah. Have I time just to share a little bit with you? I took a photograph. It's just David Pawson talking about the prophet Isaiah. Just hang on a minute. And because I think you will enjoy this and you might just find it helpful. He said, here we go again. He's talking about Isaiah. The message of the first 39 chapters, this is in Isaiah, summarizes the message of the Old Testament. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I learned something. And the last 27 chapters summarize exactly the message of the New Testament. The second part of Isaiah, that's starting at chapter 40, begins with the voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Words that later used by John the Baptist. It moves on to the servant of the Lord who is anointed by the Holy Spirit, dies for the sins of his people and is raised and exalted after his death. It then moves on to the declaration that you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And it finishes up with God saying, I am making all things new. I create a new heaven and a new earth. So we can correlate perfectly the message of Isaiah with the message of the New Testament. I've never seen it like that before. I've never fully understood why it was that the prophet spoke of the old and then he speaks of the new with Jesus and then he looks beyond to the things of eternity. And when God says he's doing a new thing, he says, the former things are past. We're already into this chapter 40 and onwards, but he says the former things are past. Where God had moved in the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, you can't go back there. I'm, I'm part of the Red Sea. You know, come on, we're in the promised land. We've already arrived. We're not going back to the former things. I'm doing a new thing. But hey, what is this new thing? The new thing that God was declaring was he was making a new heavens and a new earth. That's beyond my thinking. But today I'm living and God is doing a new thing. And we could so rejoice in what God has done. Oh, it was great. You know, we had such wonderful times of worship. Oh, it was wonderful. We did, we did so many things back then. Thank God. Don't look back. Be prepared for God to speak about something completely different and go with it into the new. Because when we do that, then the fruit that we produce is going to be mature fruit because the former has passed. It was good then, but this tree is going to produce better fruit. It's going to produce the best fruit that the people that we have influence with, that are around about us, are going to enjoy. And God is going to enjoy. You see, he said he would drink of the fruit of the vine, new in the kingdom of God. Come on, when we produce the fruit of the kingdom and we declare using the keys of the kingdom and seeing the kingdom grow. God is drinking with us of the fruit of the vine. And then when we get to heaven, we will with all 
that is to produce fruit. Taste the best wine. <coughs> the very best wine. <coughs> Proverbs 29 and verse 18 says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. Or, where there is no vision, the people perish. We are called in this day for a new day. For a new anointing with the keys of the kingdom. Some of my keys, if you remember, are no good anymore. I must have thrown them away. The door's closed. He's given me keys to open doors. To open doors. To open doors because the former things are past. But how are we to know what God wants in the new? How are we going to have ears to hear the voice of the Spirit? So can you just come and play on the piano for a moment, please? Because I, I believe that this is an important exercise that I feel to do. God will speak to us by the power of the Spirit. But how do I actually get to hear that voice? When the Queen spoke, we heard her voice speaking. You didn't speak in the presence of the Queen. And we will not speak in the presence of King Charles unless he speaks to us. It's a new day. But when we speak, when we come into the presence of the King of Kings, whose voice do we hear? It's the voice of the King. It's the voice of the King. And so I just want us to close our eyes, just pray in the Spirit, perhaps sing in the Spirit a little bit. And we're going to calm our minds. The former things have gone. God is about to reveal new things about where we as a church should be going. It's not about programs. Steve spoke some weeks ago about us being a place where people could come and encounter the power. But you see, the encounter must lead somewhere. It's no good just having a encounter, chains falling off. We've got to move on into his fullness. So as we just stay quiet, I want us to focus and say, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. So, Father, as we come into your presence, and Holy Spirit, we're asking you to reveal deep and mysterious things that we know not of, as you spoke to Donald in the field of Easter. So, we're asking you to reveal to us fresh vision fresh anointing for the days ahead that will be fully equipped as we come to pray about them that Father in heaven we will know a vision and a purpose and we will be saying yes this is where we're going we're going to ask you to remove the stones and make, make the highway clear for us that we might move into the fullness of the word of God that so Father thank you that you're now going to speak to us as individuals
hands and we're taught to write it down. If you've received something fresh in the Spirit this morning, I ask you to write it down. Give it to one of the leaders. And we can pray at night. Let the fullness of the vision come to purpose. Let the fruit of the vision be eaten abroad. Let us see the, the miracles that you've already spoken to us about fulfilled in our day. We thank you, Jesus, that your word is not being sown in thorny grounds or on hard rock. It's being sown into good ground today to bring forth the fullness of the crop in Jesus Christ. <coughs>
Steve or Sheena or Tony or anyone. I just, just want us to all open our hands um, and just say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my heart. And I'm sorry, Lord.